All right, guys, we got a new dev blog here, and I don't usually cover these in a video unless it's a big deal. And I think these new ships are going to be a pretty big deal. Um, it's a whole new line, which is cool, but this is actually introducing a brand new mechanic uh, into the game that we'll get into later that I wanted to talk about. But Dutch cruisers coming into the game soon. Uh, obviously, they're going to need to be balanced. And they'll go into a new tech tree called the Leather Netherlands. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, adding new cruisers is always an interesting thing uh, for the game. Obviously, at lower tiers, they're not going to be particularly interesting. But once you get to tier four, they start to look a little interesting. This reminds me of a graph speed a little bit. Um, just the way these look, and uh, I think they're going to be. Um, interesting because it seems like Wargaming wants these ships to play very close range, uh, and you'll see that when we take a look at the uh, the stats of some of these cruisers. Um, but even just looking at them, you can start to see that they're starting to look like they get battleship sized guns. Um, especially the tier ten; these are basically Sharnhorse guns by the looks of it to me. And the caliber seems to confirm that. So hopefully that they get better AP uh, pen values than the Sharnhorse. Sharnhorse guns are kind of lackluster these days. Um, but they do talk about wanting the Dutch cruisers to have quite a bit of armor, it seems like. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they actually do, whether it's icebreakers or if it's just deck and upper belt armor, that kind of thing. They want them to perform best at close, medium ranges, sporting allies in the fight for key areas. Okay. Strong armor, especially at the high levels. Good concealment, maneuverability. Um, and then this airstrike. Oh boy, this airstrike. Uh, this is the main part I wanted to talk about today. And just just look at this image. Uh, you're basically getting a dive bomber squad. <laughs> On a cruiser, that's exactly what we needed, right? Is more, more aircraft, more, more damage coming from the sky. Um, yeah, I don't know about this one, guys. Uh, there'll be HE bombs, so pre expect a high chance to set things on fire. Is my guess. Uh, but distance of eight to ten kilometers. It's again this closer ranged theme. So. What I'm concerned about with this is what happens when you push your cruiser up to a gigantic island next to a cap and then say, can you just launch this airstrike over the island and go and hit things on the other side of the island? Uh, I guess that would make sense because it's planes, but wouldn't it be weird that suddenly these big islands that have been known for safety but not being able to really do damage over them are now... Islands that you can do damage over. Um, I can think of some maps that are going to be pretty imbalanced with that mechanic, depending on how strong this airstrike is. And I'm I'm expecting it to be pretty strong. Um, there'll be a little bit of lead time with it, but uh, honestly, leading things, leading something with this big of a drop circle, is not really going to be that difficult. Um, you can see it seems like 8 seconds and 1.5 seconds. So if this squad is 1.6 kilometers away from us and it's 8 seconds left, perhaps to here it's like a 10 second lead. And this is pretty close range, right? We're at like 2 kilometers. But we don't know how fast these fly. And obviously this is all subject to change. Um, I'm not a CC, so I feel pretty okay about talking about this stuff. I'm sure CCs can talk about it too, but... Uh, I'm just giving you my raw thoughts on this kind of thing. And I don't like it. <laughs> I, man, I miss the days of old World of Warships, man. I really, really do. And stuff like this is just, it seems to me like another gimmick that's just going to prevent people from pushing in. Um, this is just going to promote more stale gameplay, in my mind. The art team is doing a, neat, a decent job, you know, with parachutes and that, and looks cool. But, uh... We already have such passive stale gameplay with people able to uh, nuke you off the map if you push in. Um, 
because carriers can set up a crossfire whenever they want to, and they prevent people from using islands to push up because the carrier can go around the islands. That's one of the main issues is islands actually don't offer protection in a carrier game. So having a cruiser now able to go over some of these islands and have islands not offer protection from a cruiser now, I think this is just going to make for more passive gameplay. Um, sure, they don't detect opponents, so things will have to be detected or over the islands, which is good. I think this is probably this would probably be a good nerf to aircraft carriers, where aircraft carriers can't detect opponents themselves, or maybe they only detect ships um, on the map, and they don't detect it for every surface ship to shoot at. I don't know, but it seems like the more damage you allow people to do over islands, the more useless island and map design is. Like, what's the point of having all these islands if people are just going to do damage over top of them anyway, right? I struggle to see why we need more things in the game that are going to ignore island cover. Um, and as soon as you ignore island cover, you can't push in. That's the whole thing. And that's why we have so many people camping in the back of the map is there are no safe or checkpoint style positions you can take in most maps these days, especially when there's a carrier. There's no safe place where you can stop, you can push through, you can get beat up on your way to the safe spot, and then you stop there and you can heal up for a couple minutes and something like that. There's none of that anymore when there's a carrier and when there's an airstrike. Um... That stuff just doesn't exist, and that makes me really sad uh, and really nervous. Um, Congress is also a carrier you should be aware of, or a cruiser, sorry, cruiser you should be aware of. Um, it's an Alaska at tier 8 with two less guns. Um, you can see the front turret and the back turret have only two guns instead of three. Probably going to be overpowered if it gets released like this, but I doubt it gets released like this. Um, new Dutch cruiser as well. This will probably be a premium, and it's got the small 152 millimeter guns. So you can imagine this is like going to be a reasonably high DPM squishy cruiser. Think maybe a Colbert at tier eight. Um, obviously, way less guns, but uh, engine boost, specialized repair teams, that kind of thing. Sounds like Colbert to me. Um, but going down and looking at some of these new cruisers, we can see that the Tier 10 does have 283 millimeter guns, but only a 16 kilometer firing range, which is crazy short for such large caliber guns. Um, 51,000 HP, not a whole lot actually for a Tier 10 cruiser. A lot of light cruisers at Tier 10 have that now, like think of Nevsky, that kind of thing. Um, Traditionally heavy cruisers and that kind of thing with bigger guns like this. Um, you can think of things like Moskva having 65,000-ish HP, that kind of thing. Stalingrad with its uh, over 70,000 HP. Um, this one having 51 is pretty low. Pretty low uh, range and HP. Um, the AP shell damage and HE shell damage seem similar to the Sharnhorse guns. I actually haven't checked, but uh, good Sigma with poor dispersion. 187 looks pretty good until you realize that's 187 meters at 16 kilometers. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this gun, uh, these gun calibers and that kind of thing. Uh, having cruisers deal more damage with AP... I think is a really cool thing. I I love having more AP focus ships rather than HE focus ships. Um, but it's highly likely this will just end up becoming a fire spammer because even though the HE isn't all that amazing, um, if you have this HE plus the airstrike to light people people on fire, it might turn out that it's actually a really good fire starter. So a little nervous about that. Um, it does say 25 millimeter plating, but so can things like Moskva and Petro, where only the small little upper bow is 25 millimeters. So this isn't really anything to worry about as far as armor goes. I would expect a, I would expect some sort of icebreaker plus really decently armored upper bow and deck armor on this ship. 
and probably some of the preceding ships as well. Here you can see Congress, ridiculous HP pool for tier 8 cruiser, uh, ridiculous range for a tier 8 cruiser, ridiculous gun power for a tier 8 cruiser. It keeps its 20 second reload, keeps its same dispersion, it's just two guns less and a little bit less HP. Crazy. It, it's crazy, honestly. Um, and the fact that it keeps its repair too, like... Most tier 8 cruisers don't even get a repair. That's what makes Otago and Prince Eugen kind of special in that they have... I know the British cruisers get repairs and all that stuff, but um, you trade a lot of DPM traditionally to get a repair party at tier 8. Otago does not have good DPM, but it has decent armor and it gets a repair party. Um, here, though, you get gigantic guns, gigantic health pool, great armor. Keep in mind, 27 millimeters. <laughs> yeah, I hope this thing doesn't get released the way it is. Um, and then here's the Tier 8 Premium Dutch Cruiser. You know, small HP pool, small guns, decent firing range. Um, it'll be interesting to see. 11% fire chance is pretty reasonable for 152 millimeter guns. And a 6 second reload is pretty okay. Um, Cleveland has in this reload range as well, but with more guns. Um, but we'll have to see how it goes. Maybe the shell velocity is better or something like that, easier to hit things, that kind of thing. But uh, you do get a repair party, which, yeah, it seems like a lot of tier 8s are getting repair parties now, huh? <laughs> these can all change, obviously. It's not like these thing, these stats are set in stone, this is just a dev blog, but... I wanted to give you guys a heads up of what's coming down the pipeline with uh, the Dutch cruisers and hopefully not Congress. Um, but yeah, this this is the part that worries me here. The airstrike. The airstrike definitely worries me. But hopefully it's balanced and it's not going to be too overpowered like aircraft carriers currently are. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day.